get started. Uh, so today we want to talk about uh, Stackelberg game. Uh, so uh, the motivation for Stackelberg game comes from uh, the following idea. There are many scenarios where one player is more powerful than the other player. Okay, to, to give you an example, the university is more powerful than me. Okay, so university can make a rule and impose it upon me, and university can make a rule and impose it upon you. Uh, the government can make a rule and impose it upon their citizens, right? And uh, the citizens, citizens have to follow the rules. The company can make a rule, and the employees are going to react to those rules, but the employees themselves are not as powerful as the company. Okay, so those are the cases. Uh, uh, let, let's not talk only about social examples. Uh, let's talk about some engineering examples. The, IA, the, the market or the government uh, identifies what rules a market should be governed by, things like financial market, things like uh, trading, uh, or things like electricity market, or things like spectrum auctions. And then the participants are going to react to those rules and choose whatever or bid optimally in those markets. Okay, so that's one example in engineering scenario. And then uh, a, a antivirus company will come up with its antivirus software, and the spam spammers or hackers will react to that antivirus software optimally in some in some way. Uh, what are the other examples? The spam filter, a spam filter would be created. Uh, by a company, let's say Google creates a spam filter, okay, and the, the spammers are going to react to that spam filter in an appropriate manner, and they will tweak the words within their spam message so that the spam filter is not able to go through, pass through, uh, uh, so that their message is able to pass through the spam filter, okay? So those are many engineering situations uh, where there is one player, so there is a game between two players, but one player is powerful enough to impose its strategy on the other player. Okay, and the question, and that's the class of games that we are going to uh, talk about today. So, player one is called the leader, and he announces his or her strategy and then player two is the follower and it reacts optimally to the rule okay or to the strategy Okay, so recently uh, many universities across U.S. Uh, announced the rule that nobody can smoke within the campus. Okay, so what does what did followers do? Uh, they sneak behind some trees or some whatever shrubs or uh, some building, and then they smoke, and then they come back to the university. Okay, so this is this is fairly normal. Okay, this is fairly commonplace. Player one makes the rule, and player two decide or react optimally to that particular strategy. So, to uh, so let's look at a game. A, the matrix of player one. So, player one is the row player, and player two is the column player. So, zero. 2, 1.5, 1, 1, 3, minus 1, 2, 2, and the cost, so this, these are cost matrices, cost matrices, B is minus 1, 1, minus 2 over 3, 2, 0, 1, 0, 1, minus 1 over 2. 
So first question is, what is a Nash equilibrium in this game? Okay, so what I'm going to claim is, uh, this is, this is my uh, top, middle, down, and this is my left, middle, and right. Okay, and what I'm going to claim is M1, M2 is a Nash equilibrium. <coughs> so let's look at that. Player 2 decides to play according to M2. So this is the minimum cost in this entire row. Uh, no. Uh, so player 2 has, player 1 has to react. So if player 2 fixes M2, this is the best response for player 1. If player 1 picks M1, this is the best response for player 2, right? So that's a Nash equilibrium. Now, what's the payoff or the cost? It's 1, 0, right? The cost is 1 for player 1 and the cost is 0 for player 2. So this is, this Nash equilibrium is under the assumption that no player is more powerful than the other. So they cannot impose their strategy on the other player. Let's look at Stackelberg equilibrium. So if P1 chooses top, what is the best response? So best response of player 2 against T, what is it? Okay, so this is the best response map of player 2 if player 1 chooses T. So what is that? So if player 1 chooses T, what gives player 2 the minimum cost? L. Okay. What is BR2 of M1? M1, right? Because M1 M M1, one M2 is Nash equilibrium. What is Br2 of D R? Okay, let's look at the cost. What's the cost here? So this is my L T. So L L T is zero. minus 1. What is the cost here? Zero, zero. One, zero. 1, 0. What is the cost here? Two. 2 and minus 1 over 2. Okay? So, now assume that player 1 can announce its strategy before the game is played. What, what should player 1 announce its strategy as? T. Sorry? L? T. So P1 should pick L. Right? So if P1 picks L, then P2 will pick... T. Oh, sorry, T. If P1 picks T, then P2 will choose L, in which case P1 will get a cost of 0, which is the minimum of all three possible costs, right? So P1 should pick T, then P2 picks, picks BR2 of T, or whatever the action of player 1 is, so BR2 of T, which is equal to L, and the cost is 0 comma minus 1. So what happened here? So in this case, the cost has reduced for both the players, right? If they were playing a Stackelberg game. Okay, so that's a very nice property of this particular game, but that's not a general property of Stackelberg game. Okay, so in this game, in this particular Stackelberg game, 
it turned out that if players act according to Stackelberg game, so player 2 elects player 1 to be the leader, the cost for both the players have reduced. Okay, instead of they both playing a, 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 a game in which both of, them's are e both of them are equal. Okay, so let's, uh, okay, so that's when player 1 is the leader. So let's change this and assume that player 2 is the leader. Okay, let's, let's say that player 1 said that well player 2 should act as a leader in this particular case. So let's do this entire computation again. Yeah. No, they are not. Player 2 is doing what is best for himself. Player 1 is doing what is best for himself. All that we are doing is player 1 becomes the leader so he can impose his or her strategy on player 2. So this is not always true, like the cost doesn't always No, happen. I'll get to that example in a bit. Okay, now assume that P2 is the leader. So I want to know the best response of player 1 if P2 chooses L, BR1, P2 chooses M2, and BR1, P2 chooses R. So what happens when player one chooses L, player two will choose player one will choose down. If player two chooses M2, player one will choose M1. And if player two chooses R, player two chooses R, what is player one going to choose? T. So let's do the cost analysis. So DL, DL for player 1, D and L is negative 1, minus 1, 0. Cost is, for M1, M2, it's 1, 0. And the cost for TR, 1.5 and minus 2 over 3. So what should player 2 choose as its strategy? R, right? Player 2 chooses R, P1 chooses VR1 of R which is equal to T and the cost is 1.5 minus 2 over 3. Okay? So player 1 is worse off, player 1's cost has increased but player 2's cost has reduced. Okay? So it's not advantageous for the two players to for both the players in this case, as was the case in the previous example. Okay, any questions so far on this example? Okay, pretty straightforward. So let's uh, look at another game with a different payoff matrix. So, yeah. So, uh, how do you choose the best response if the costs are equal? That's the next example. Okay, so my next example is A equals 0, 1, 3, 2, 2, negative 1. And then B is 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, negative 1. Okay, so let's call this top down and LMR. Okay, again there is a Nash equilibrium here.
So P1 again is the leader. Fine. So what's the Nash equilibrium in this game? Okay, so this one is a, this one is a weakly dominant strategy. So this strategy is a dominated strategy by this strategy. Okay, and so player two will always play. So player one will always no. This is uh, sorry. Okay, so. LD, RD, DR is a Nash equilibrium. Uh, let's see why. So if player one picks D, if player one picks D, then player two will pick R. If player two picks R, which is then this, then player one will pick D. Okay, so this is Nash equilibrium and the cost is minus 1, minus 1. Okay, perfect. Let's do, uh, let's say player 1 is the leader. So what is the best response of player 2? If player 1 picks T, what is it? So player 1 picks T, what's the best response of player 2? L or M. And in this case, the cost is 0, 0 or 1, 0. BR2 of M, no, D, what is it? L or R. And the cost is 2, negative 1 or minus 1, negative 1, minus 1, minus 1. So my question is, okay, so this brings that case, right? You have two, two equal costs. Uh, what would player 1 choose? So if you were player 1, what would you choose? D? D. In the worst case, you might, the cost might be 2 when you choose D. Right, right. So Jayant is saying that it's better to pick T, player one, for player 1 to pick T because in the worst case, he's securing a cost of 1, whereas in this case, he's securing a cost of 2 against the worst possible action of player 2. So P1 chooses T that secures a cost of one okay and then player two can react whatever way he wants because for him it doesn't matter whether he picks l or m okay he's indifferent so in this case so this leads us to the definition of stackelberg equilibrium in stackelberg equilibrium player one should secure a certain cost so the, so player 1 should secure the minimum possible cost given the player 2 is going to have a worst response over whatever its available actions are. So that brings us to the definition of Stackelberg equilibrium which is as follows. Okay, so A1 or A1 action set of player 1, A2 action set of player 2, C1 is a function of A1 and A2 and C2 is a function of A1 and A2. Okay, so you use C2 to find the best response for 
player 1. So BR of A1 is equal BR2 of A1 is equal to min or argmin argmin over A2 in A C2 A1 A2 yeah, this should be A2 and then A1 star can be any strategy in the argmin of A1 in A1 max over all A2 in best response over A1 of C1 A1 A2. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention one thing. In this particular game, you can see that the Nash equilibrium cost is lower than the cost that can be obtained by the Stackelberg equilibrium. Okay, so that's a feature of this particular game where the cost increases if you play a Stackelberg game as opposed to if you play a usual game. So what is player one trying to do? It is trying to secure the maximum possible cost, assuming that player two is going to behave optimally, should player one choose A1. Okay? So this A1 star is a Stackelberg equilibrium for player one, and BR2 A1 star will be the Stackelberg equilibrium for player two. And the theorem is, as you can see, a Stackelberg equilibrium will always exist uh, in finite game because it's all, this is all a finite operation. You're not doing anything sophisticated here. Uh, but the main important theorem is if BR2A1 is singleton for all A1 in A1, you know what a singleton is? Single element in the set. So if BR2 A1, which is the best response of player two, uh, given that player one will act according to A1, is singleton, so it has only one element, then, then C1 star Stackelberg is always less than or equal to C1 star Nash. Okay? So the cost you can get with Stackelberg equilibrium is less than or equal to the cost you can get with Nash. Any question so far? Is the is the proof of it clear? Okay, you are nodding your head. Is this clear to you? Yeah. How would you go about proving it? Actually, you can see it in the example. <laughs> but seeing it in example is not the proof. <laughs> but but the idea is the idea is very similar. Okay, so. Should we prove it? Let's uh, let's prove it. Okay, let C1 star Stackelberg be greater than C1 star Nash. So this means that there exists A1 star 
which is a Stackelberg equilibrium uh, such that C1 A1 star Stackelberg A2 star which will be the best response is greater than C1 A1 Nash A2 Nash. Okay. So if this is the case, so I'm proving it by contradiction. If this is the case, why shouldn't A1 just pick A1 Nash as its best response and get the same party, same cost? Okay, because you know that Br2 A1 star is going to be singleton. Okay, so there is a unique response that player two can have, thereby minimizing its cost. So therefore, so this implies that A1 star stack is not a Stackelberg equilibrium strategy for player one, okay? So A1 star stack doesn't seem to be the Stackelberg equilibrium for player one because he knows that he can play A1 Nash and at least secure this much amount of payoff for himself. Contradiction. Okay, one thing that I do not know is whether there are efficient algorithms to compute Stackelberg game in a large matrix games or not. Uh, I haven't looked at any papers written recently about Stackelberg games. I mean, computational Stackelberg games. So that's something that you might want to, uh, want to take a look at because that seems to be an open field for the time being. Any questions so far? Okay. Yes. So if, if the uh, best response of uh, AI2 is not a single, mm -hmm. it's possible for the Nash equilibrium to have the lower post than the stack of very Yes. Uh, yes. So why would the player In fact, if you look at the second example that I had showed, the Stackelberg cost was higher than the Nash equilibrium cost. Yeah, so why would the player, the lead player, player one, would play according to the Stackelberg equilibrium? Because he doesn't have an option. But he's the leader, right? Yes, he has the he's the leader, but the second player can act optimally, react optimally. Because remember, the leader has to declare its strategy. It's not like in Nash where you are expecting the leader to expecting the other player to play the game. The leader has to announce the strategy. The government has to announce the rule. The university has to announce the rule. It's not like you enter the university and then university will create whatever rule and you will act whatever way and you all receive the payoff and you go home and be happy, right? So uh, that's the problem. You see, in, in games, just because somebody has an upper hand by declaring its strategy doesn't necessarily mean that, that player will be better off, okay? In fact, uh, we will see, we will review this point again and again. Just because you have more information in a game doesn't mean you will have a better payoff. Just because you have more power in the game doesn't mean you will have a better payoff. So sometimes it's better to be powerless. Okay, you might have a better payoff that way. And this kind of things are useful, for instance, in cybersecurity, where you don't want, where you want to tell the adversary what you are doing in some cases, okay, so that the adversary has a lower payoff, or you want to not tell something to the adversary so that he gets confused and he doesn't have as much payoff. So you have to look at every scenario carefully. Okay, so. Okay, so now we want to move on to mixed uh, Stackelberg equilibrium. So right now we were talking about pure Stackelberg equilibrium and the, 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 Main theorem or main result besides this result was that a pure Stackelberg equilibrium will always exist, okay, because we are in a finite game setting. Uh, 
so the Stackelberg game, is it like the dynamic game when the player one plays first and then player two? No. So what's the difference? All that player one does is declares its strategy, but not plays it. I mean, he doesn't play it. Okay, they are slightly different concept. Uh, to, to, uh, let's look at an example. University says, made the rule, you cannot smoke on the university campus. Okay, if you smoke on university campus, you will have to pay a fine of $500. But then player two smokes on the campus, <laughs> okay, uh, but he doesn't get caught by the university, so university never finds him or her, right? So, so yeah, so the player one will take an action only if it detects that player two has taken an action or something, okay? So, so it, all that player one is doing is declaring its strategy, nothing else. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about mixed Stackelberg equilibrium. And I want to start with the game A1001 and B. This, these are again cost matrices. B equals half, one, one, half. Okay, it's a symmetric game. Both the matrices are symmetric. Top, down, left, right. Okay. So what's the pure strategy Stackelberg equilibrium? So if player one pays, plays top, player two will play L, in which case, so B, R, two. So player one is the leader, okay? P1, leader. So B, R, two of T, is what L and the cost is one comma half and B R two of D is equal to R and the cost is one comma one half. Okay. Let's, uh, that's good. Now let's say player one says, you know what, I can mix my strategies, okay? So I'm going to pick P star, P, uh, P star, which is one half, one half, and I'm going to declare that I'm going to act according to this fashion, okay? So what university says is that, well, with probability half, I'm going to catch you and I'll find you, and with probability half, I will not catch you and will not find you. Okay? So what is the best response for player two? What is Q star? It will be argmin of P star BQ transpose Q and delta two. What's that? Let's, let's uh, do it argmin of one half, one half, half, one, one half, multiplied by Q, which is equal to argmin what is this? Three over four, three over four, multiplied by Q. So what did player one do? He made player two indifferent between his choices. So everything, this is the entire set delta two, 
Okay. So what's the expected payoff for player one? So the cost is one half and three fourth in this case. Okay. So look at this cost, which is a pure strategy Stackelberg equilibrium, and this cost, which is mixed strategy Stackelberg equilibrium. So the cost has reduced for player one. Okay. So mixing actions in Stackelberg equilibrium seems to be doing better for player one. Right? Uh, this also answers your question that player one did not act. All he declared was his strategy. This is my P star. Okay? But the action will happen once you realize this P star and Q star. You realize the random variables that are distributed according to P star and Q star. Okay, so any question on this? Okay, so let's look at another game. Yeah, for player one. So if player one acts according to half half, so what is P star? transpose a q so that's equal to half half 1001 q which is equal to half q1 plus half q2 which is equal to half right okay yeah then it is a Stackelberg equilibrium. It, yes, it turns out that it's a Stackelberg equilibrium. That is when it neutralizes the other, other players. Also. No, but I'm not trying to neutralize here. All I'm trying to do is get a better payoff for myself. Okay, so let's let's do this this part. Let's say that it is half plus epsilon and half minus epsilon. Okay, let's see what happens in this case. half plus epsilon, half minus epsilon, what is B? Half, one, one, half, Q. Can someone do the, do the calculation? Argument Q. Uh, can you say that out loud? 1 by 4 plus epsilon over 2 plus 1 by 2 minus epsilon. And I have 1 by 2 plus epsilon plus 1 by 4 minus epsilon over 2 multiplied by Q. This is argument Q. 3 by 4 minus epsilon over 2, 3 by 4 plus epsilon over 2, Q. So what is player 2 going to do? Uh, it wants to minimize the cost. So player one, player 2 will take action 1, which is L, all the time. Okay, so what is my cost here? It will be... Okay, I need to compute the cost, but the cost for player 2 is 3 by 4 minus epsilon over 2. What is the cost for player 1? So that's uh, 1 half plus epsilon. Yes, 1 half plus epsilon. Okay, so this is not, not a good cost for player 2. And if you, if you had made it minus epsilon and plus epsilon, you would still have 1 half plus epsilon here. Okay, so this is not a, stock, not a Stackelberg. Not a Stackelberg equilibrium.
Okay, but what I am going to show you next is that in mixed strategies, Stackelberg equilibrium may or may not exist. Okay, in this case, we saw that in mixed strategies, Stackelberg equilibrium exists, but now I am going to show that it need not be the case all the time. All I am going to do is tweak the payoff matrix of player two a little bit. One by two, one by three. Okay. And let's allow player one to mix its action. Question? No? Okay. So P1, player 1 picks P equals to P1, P2, and P2 picks Q1, Q2. Of course, P1 plus P2 has to, or, or let me say 1 minus P1 here. And let me say 1 minus Q1 here. So, and let me write down the expression for P transpose BQ. This is given by minus 7 over 6 P1 plus 2 over 3 multiplied by Q1. So now I want to find out the best response of player 2 with respect to P. Remember Q1, P1 has to be between 0 and 1 and Q1 also has to be between 0 and 1. Okay, so instead of having two parameters, now I just have to keep track of one parameter. Okay, so the first case is, this is going to be positive, okay, so that's minus 7 over 6 P1 plus 2 over 3 is greater than 0. What would Q1 be in that case? 1, 0. Oh, uh, if it is positive then Q1 should be 0, Q2 should be 1. Uh, what if this is negative? Less than 0, then it's 1, 0, and otherwise it's the entire Q1 in 0, 1. If minus 7 over 6 P1 plus 2 over 3 equal to 0. Okay. So what does this scenario correspond to? What does this inequality mean? P1 is? P1 is less than 4 over 7, right? This corresponds to P1 is greater than 4 over 7, and this corresponds to P1 equals to 4 over 7, okay? So we got the best response curve for player two. So let's say player 1 player 1 plays according to 
4 over 7 minus epsilon and 3 over 7 plus epsilon. Okay, then you can show that P transpose A Q star of P. So I'm going to define this as Q star of P. is 3 over 7 plus epsilon if i pick p equals to 4 over 7 plus epsilon and 3 over 7 minus epsilon p transpose a q star of p is equal to p1 is equal to 4 over 7 plus epsilon. Okay. So what do you think player one is going to choose? Let's let's write down the third possibility where P star is corresponding to this situation. So let's say if P is 4 over 7 and 3 over 7, then P transpose A Q star of P, which actually is the entire set, so you can pick any Q in the set E, is equal to 4 over 7. So what do you think the Stackelberg equilibrium for leader should be in this case? First one. Okay, where epsilon should be as small as possible, but as you can see, he can never achieve the cost of 3 over 7. Right? All he can achieve is 3 over 7 plus epsilon for very small value of epsilon. In all other cases, the cost is going to be significantly higher than 3 over 7 plus epsilon. So there is no uh, so there is no Stackelberg equilibrium, no Stackelberg equilibrium in mixed strategies. Okay, any question? Yes. So, uh, why don't they want to just choose arbitrarily small epsilon and x one? Yes, that's what he will do. That's what, the, that's what player one is going to do. He'll just pick an epsilon very close to zero. But the unfortunate reality is he can't pick epsilon equal to zero. Okay, it has to be a positive number and as close to zero as possible, but nothing smaller than any positive number it can't be zero okay uh, any other question no so with this uh, in mind who can uh, come up with a definition for mixed tackleberg equilibrium what is the mixed tackleberg equilibrium strategy if at all it exists Remember, we had a we had a min max condition in the previous case. So, what do we do now? Okay, of course, the first thing is to say that br two of p will be given by arg min of p transpose b q, where q is in delta n. Okay, so I'm looking at a Stackelberg game by the way this game was defined in 1935 ish okay so it's a fairly old concept 
uh, Stackelberg game M N A B. Okay, it looks like non-zero sum game, but it's a Stackelberg game because player one is the leader. So this is my best response map for player two. Given that player one is going to act according to P, what should P1 star B, P star A, Q star of P. Okay, so when is P star a Stackelberg equilibrium for player one, equilibrium strategy for player one? What should I write here? Not min, I, I have to write inf over P in delta M max over q in best response of player 2 with respect to p of p transpose a q. By the way, if I fix p, why is this well defined? Anyone knows? Why should this be well defined? Why, why do I write max and not soup here? Not delta m, this is br2 of p. It, it has something to do with linear program, but not exactly. See, this is a compact set, okay? And this is a continuous function over a compact set, so it will have some minimum. But if you pick a sequence in BR2 of P, which converges, then the convergent value, I mean the sequence at which it converges, is also going to be in the set itself. So it's a closed set. So it's a closed subset of a compact set Therefore, it's a compact set, and therefore, I can write it as max. Okay, because an equilibrium, a maximum, will exist within the set itself. Okay, so what my argument is, we are two of p. So for every p in delta m, we are two of p as a subset of delta n is closed. Okay. Any any question so far? Okay, so in this case we had this inf problem. This was the inf was three over seven, but there is no Stackelberg equilibrium because there is no p star that can achieve this inf. Okay, all it can achieve is inf plus a little bit of a positive number. Okay, so P star is a Stackelberg equilibrium of, so P star is Stackelberg equilibrium strategy for player one. Okay, so of course I have to introduce this in the context of finite games, but later on you can use the same concept for infinite games which are useful for control systems perspective. And if the finite games thing hold, and you look at natural language processing, then it holds for spam filters, okay? So you can design spam filters. There has been some work, of course I'm not familiar with it because I don't work in the natural language processing area. Uh, all I know that there are some papers in that field which uses this concept to design better spam filters, okay? So, but of course the, the action set there is very, very large because it is a combination of all possible words you can use in a spam email, okay, for the, for the attacker, whereas for the defender or the spam filter, it is the number of methods you can use to label an email as a spam email or not a spam email, okay? And the matrix there is pretty simple. The matrix A and B comprises only of ones and zeros. Okay, whether it's labeled as a spam or it's not labeled as a spam. Or a legitimate email is labeled as a spam. 
So there are uh, other topics where you can apply all this uh, situation. Um, it was a fairly active area of research, but I don't see many papers being written nowadays. Okay, any question? No question? By the way, uh, another thing is, even though I'm writing it as M, N, A, and B, you can have B equals minus A, okay? But it doesn't mean it becomes zero-sum game. It still remains a Stackelberg game. I mean, uh, the properties would still be inherited according to what we just discussed. Those properties will be inherited by that zero-sum Stackelberg game. Okay. Uh, you can also have Stackelberg, in, uh, Stackelberg game in extensive form. You can have information structures and so on. You can convert it into a normal form game and you can analyze the game and you can come up with equilibriums and so on and so forth. Okay, all that story. Uh, next topic. I, I thought there will be some questions about Stackelberg game, but there aren't many. So next topic is infinite games. infinite games okay and the idea is one player's action set is an infinite uh, number uh, i mean the, it has an infinite number of actions so let's look at one game oh one one thing that i did not do uh, proposition is a theorem C C one Stackelberg star in mixed strategy is always less than or equal to C one star Nash no in mixed Nash okay it's always less than equal to so the optimal cost which is the infimum will always be less than equal to what you can get with a Nash equilibrium uh, remember again that in mixed strategies Nash equilibrium would always exist whereas the Stackelberg may or may not exist Okay, so I have a zero-sum game. Game. A1 is equal to top and down. A, A2 is equal to the space of natural number. And now a funny thing will happen. I'm going to write the cost matrix. Okay, so 
So what is happening here? Player one picks one of these two pure strategies. Player two can pick any of these uh, strategies. So you want to define. So this game, first of all, this game doesn't have a pure strategy equilibrium. Why? Let's say player one fixes. Player one says that he's always going to play T. In which case, player two can keep going, keep taking a larger value of action. Player one is the minimizer, right? Yeah, player one is the minimizer. So player two wants to maximize it. OK, so player one will get, an, pay, uh, get a cost of two. So player one says, well, let me play the, denominate, uh, the, the down uh, strategy. In which case, player two wants to maximize so player two will pick a very, very large action. Okay, and the payoff in that case would be or the cost to P1 will be one minus epsilon, and the cost to P2 will be equal to sorry, the payoff to P2 or let's say one minus. 1 over n, and the payoff to p2 is going to be 1 minus 1 over n, okay? Where n is what the what player 2 picks as its, uh, as its strategy. So what do we see here? What is the observation here? So in pure strategy, there is no equilibrium, right? But the value of the game in pure strategy can be arbitrarily close to 1. Okay, it has to be smaller than 1, but it will be arbitrarily close to 1. So what's the suggestion? There is no pure strategy equilibrium here. So what's the suggestion? The obvious thing to try. Mixed strategy. Right, so let's mix the strategy. So P1 is in delta 2. What, what should Z satisfy? So Z, so now I need to define delta infinity in a very specific fashion. Okay, so what is delta infinity? So x in or q in r infinity such that what should q satisfy? So q i should be greater than or q j should be greater than or equal to 0 and summation of q j should be equal to 1. Yeah, why not? 1 over 2 raised to j. Okay, so, so that would be my mixed strategy. And then the payoff let's see. So that will be or cost to player 1. Cost to player 1 is P transpose A Q. Hmm. <laughs> How do I write the expression? Okay, let's uh, let's give it a shot. Uh, so this is P transpose. So this is one. Oh my God! What happened to my? Calculation skills. <laughs> okay, uh, this is one over n, one over j. So two into q one plus summation one over j q j for j equals two to infinity. Oh 
what about the second part? It will be 0 q1 plus, that's 1 minus 1 over j. So summation 1 minus 1 over j qj. j equals 2 to infinity. So that's P1. Two Q1 plus summation j equals two to infinity one over j q j plus p two. Or well, let me call it one minus p. One minus p into summation j equals two to infinity. 1 minus 1 over j qj. Should we simplify it further? Is there a value in simplifying it further? Yeah, because yeah, sum of qj should be equal to one minus q1, and this there is a negative one over j here. No, it won't, because this is negative p, so it won't cancel out with. Anything else? It's also multiplied by p. Uh, Sorry? It's also multiplied by p. Yeah, this is multiplied by p, and this will be negative p, negative j, q j. So it both gets added up. So let's let's uh, let's try to find out what the what the cost looks like. So cost is equal to two q one p. plus summation 1 over j qjp plus 1 minus p 1 minus q1 plus 1 minus p no there is a negative here negative 1 minus p summation 1 over j q j and this is 2 to infinity 2 to infinity okay that's my cost how else can i simplify it so i can remove the braces from here so minus and I can write 2 over j here <coughs> solve it <laughs> okay what how can the so what value of p can player 1 pick so as to minimize this cost Okay, so let me see what the equilibrium for this particular game is. I see.
so the the equilibrium is p star should be equal to p star should be equal to 2 over 3 no 1 over 3 and let me so p and 1 minus p so 1 minus p star is 2 over 3 okay so that's the best response for player 1 uh, and then you have do they have q star here So Q star turns out to have this property. So Q star 1 is equal to 1 over 3. And then Q star infinity is equal to 2 over 3. So what's the problem here? Sorry? Yeah, terms in between are all zero. So there is no weight. So what player two does, he doesn't put any weight on any of these actions. He wants to put all his weight on the infinity action. But the problem here is that he cannot play infinity. That's not part of his strategy set. All he can do is play a natural number. Okay. So in this case, for player two, the value doesn't exist. I, uh, rather I should say that there is no pure strategy uh, or there is no strategy which he can use to get the value of the game. Okay, So P2 does not have a feasible strategy that can guarantee guarantee a payoff equal to value. Uh, uh, what I mean by payoff is expected payoff and what I mean by value is expected value because now we are looking at mixed strategy equilibrium. So in this case, there is no strategy, feasible strategy for P2 that can guarantee a payoff that is equal to value, but he can guarantee a payoff, but can get payoff equal to value minus epsilon. Okay, by picking a very large, by putting this weight two over three on a very large natural number, he can guarantee, a va guarantee himself a payoff which is slightly less than the value of the game. Okay, so that's a, a gentle introduction to infinite games. Okay, <laughs> we will talk more about infinite games in the next class. We'll see when a value exists, uh, when a value may not exist. Um, it turns out that for by infinity games, so that means player one and player two, both of them have infinite number of actions. There is no general result which says that they can guarantee some sort of payoff to themselves or some sort of value to themselves. Okay, so we'll talk about all those situations in the next class. Yeah. Any yeah, any question? Yeah. Why does Q one star equal to one by three? Why should he even put a weight on one where he didn't have That's a good point. Let's uh, let's assume that infinity is an option for player one. Okay, sorry, for player two. Okay. What would the payoff matrix be look like? Two, zero, and then zero, one. Okay. So just looking at the first 
column and the last column. And so if you look at the neutralizing strategy, this is the neutralizing strategy for the players. Right? Right. Yeah, but this is a zero sum. Uh, battle of sexes was non zero sum, so yeah. Yeah, right. But but yes, the payoff looks like the battle of sexes game, so uh, we get a similar equilibrium strategy here because it's neutralizing. Okay. Okay, any other question? No? Alrighty. Uh, project. Okay. Uh, it has to be submitted the project uh, topic as well as the references you plan on reading or whatever you want to do has to be submitted by uh, Thursday.